Welcome back to the Bristol Bakehouse. Today we're going to be making a groom fondant topper and to do that you will need the following things. Got some corn flour or cornstarch if you're in America on a plate here. Don't worry about sieving it, that's fine. Also in a bag we've got some flesh coloured fondant and the various different colours that we're going to need for the groom to wear. He's going to be in a charcoal grey suit He's got chestnut coloured hair and he's going to be having a green tie. Now obviously you can use the colours that your groom is actually going to be wearing. The reason it's in one of these Ziploc bags is to make sure that the fondant doesn't dry out. To help make the groom the right size, you're going to need the bride that you've made. Now the bride I've got measures just under three inches tall and I'm going to be fitting her and a groom into a tub this size. So I've brought her along just to check as I go along that the groom isn't too small or too tall. Unlock your Ziploc bag and get out the colour that you want your trousers to be and put that to one side. And you're going to have to mould the fondant in your hands until it's pliable and you'll probably find it's rather sticky. So bring your cornstarch or corn flour over, just dip your fondant in, roll it around and you'll find that it's much easier to work with. Now you're going to take a chunk of fondant and this is going to be your trousers. Mould it into a rectangular shape like so. So once you're happy that you've got a rectangular shape for your trousers, take a very sharp knife and cut in the middle of the trousers and take a tiny triangle of fondant out and discard that. Press the trousers back together and you should have some legs. So get the fondant you're going to use for the colour of the shoes. I'm going to use black for my fondant Roll around shoes. fondant again. Divide your fondant into two and then roll each one separately. Flatten, pinch into a sort of shoe shape, get a small piece of baking parchment that is separate from the one that you're working on and that way your fondant groom won't stick to the tub that you're going to put him in. Place the shoes side by side, they should be roughly the same. Wet the paintbrush in the water, paint the top of the shoes, take your trousers, put them on top of the shoes, then paint the top of the trousers again with some more water and you're ready to put on the colour of the shirt. Now I'm going to have a white shirt so I shall take some white fondant, not quite as much as I've got here and once again have to roll the fondant in your hands until it becomes pliable and if it's too sticky you know what to do, into the corn flour is my bride going to be much taller or much shorter than her groom? Looks about right to me. Now it doesn't matter too much if the shirt doesn't look perfect because the majority of the shirt is going to be covered with the jacket and the tie. So when you pop the shirt on, just make sure you press it down so that it's going to be about the right size for the groom to stand against his bride. Now one of the things that's really difficult about making the groom is trying to get him so that the weight balance stays upright and your groom doesn't fall to one side. So you're going to need a cocktail stick and you're going to need to insert the cocktail sti stick as accurately as possible so that his head is going to be able to be put on top and he's not going to flop. So take your bride, put her next to the groom, does she measure up about right? If so, then you've got it right. So we'll take the bride away for now and just concentrate on the groom. The next thing we're going to have to do for our groom is make his jacket. So what we're going to do is just pull the groom away slightly and we're going to take the same colour fondant that we used for his trousers, assuming of course that your groom is wearing the same colour jacket as his trousers, make sure you don't get that one wrong, and roll your fondant around again and we're going to have to roll it out in a rolling pin, so just take some corn flour or cornstarch and dust 
the baking parchment that you're using and roll it out fairly thinly and you want a long, thin piece of fondant so that you can cut it accurately into a jacket. Before we do the jacket itself, we're going to have to give the groom a neck. So, grab yourself some of the flesh-coloured fondant that you're using, just a tiny amount really, and pop that on top of the cocktail stick, like so. That may look like an enormous neck, but you can take a little bit away if you've used too much, and it just helps support the jacket that's about to go on there. Just be careful you don't put too much around the front, otherwise he'll get a double chin. The next bit that you need to do is probably one of the trickiest parts, and that's put on the jacket. So I'll take the paintbrush and delicately paint against the sides of the jacket. You're going to have to make sure that the jacket reaches just below the beginning of his trousers, and because the jacket can't be made in one piece, you're going to have to cut three pieces that are all the same length. So what I recommend you do is you get your knife and you just measure with your fingertips against it how long the jacket is going to need to be and then add about three or four millimetres that's going to fold over the top to reach his neck. Now I've got what probably looks like 12-13 millimetres but your jacket may be slightly different. I'm going to cut myself a piece of fondant that is straight on all four sides and then cut that into three sections that will be used for the jacket. Measuring with your knife against the jacket, we'll do the back piece first and then you can hold up the fondant next to your fondant person and just decide is that about right. Fold it into the sides, carefully press the top down and then the sides fold in like so and don't worry too much about those seams because we can cover those if you're not happy with them. Turn your fondant figure around and then you're going to do the front side. So once again taking the tip of the knife just have a look how big is that going to be? So I'm going to cut myself that much to work with. I'm going to do that the same size for both sides of the jacket, like so. And then the jacket is going to have a slight curve to it, so I'm going to cut that curve off. And the piece that you get is a very small triangle, which is, which is extremely helpful because that small triangle you're then going to cut to fix to the jacket later and we'll do that in a moment. So keep that triangle and put it to one side. Use the tip of the knife to pick up your jacket. Fix the jacket like so. It should nestle perfectly. And then we're going to do the other side. So turn the fondant figure around, tip of the knife underneath the piece of jacket you've got and then fix in place, once again pressing in on the side. The and now we're going to do those triangles I spoke of, so let's move him to one side, bring the triangles back, and the triangles you just have to cut into the shape that a jacket is, so take a small portion out, and it really helps to have a picture if you're unsure about what kind of shape to do and we're going to fix that to the jacket so more water is needed just delicately paint the front of the jacket then with the tip of the knife you're going to put that in place and if you can see what I've done there just pat that down and you'll see that's the side of the jacket there we're going to do the same on the other side Put it in place. Check that it matches up with the other side, that's really important. 